Hello world. Okay, we've got uh, the Vatican responding to all of our uploads as we expose the devil in the Vatican in uh, the Antichrist, Francis and uh, Lucifer against Swain, his right hand man. Okay, so the latest piece of humor is called uh, entitled Humility of Francis, posted to Francis' Facebook page and uh, shared with Pope Benedict the Six Things Facebook page, probably George operating that one. Um, he seriously has to get himself a new script writer. If he's writing the script, then uh, he fails miserably, takes some more lessons in rhetoric, as Augustine did. By the way, in reading the writings of the fouling charges of the uh, fathers of the church, um, the Christ views them all as completely insane. So what have we got? We've got, uh, we've got a couple of millennia now of uh, people espousing um, complete and absolute utter gobbledygook, total confusion, Nobody had a clue, which is why the Christ has had to reincarnate in to his body of flesh in the person of Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall, which is the new name of the revelation that he warned through the Archangel Michael. Now, as we go through this, because this speech was uh, written by Francis, or at least read by Francis uh, on Friday, I believe, as he's consecrating a new statue uh, to um, the Archangel Michael and St. Joseph. Well, let me point out to you that the Archangel Michael is the heavenly presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and looks exactly like Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall in his younger days and as Jesus. Now, Gabriel, of course, is the old man, the image on the Shroud of Turin, if you like, and is the angel of the Lord, the presence of the Lord. Now, the Lord being the Trinity. Let me explain to you a simple lesson on the Trinity. It is Yahweh, the soul from the heavenly realm, in the Son known as Jesus. He said then, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. The Father and I are one. So who is speaking as Jesus? Duh, it was the Father. Okay? Back now as the resurrected soul, which is the Holy Ghost, crucified the body of flesh Jesus. So the soul Yahweh left the body on the cross and returned as the Holy Ghost. So your ghost can only be the soul after death. So the Holy Ghost of Jesus, which was the soul always in the body, returns to leave and burn his image on the outside of the burial cloth known today as the most holy shroud of Turin or Sindoni do Torino as the evidence of who the Christ is today. The Christ is the Father and Jesus all in one, the Christ. Why? Jesus said he was the door to the Father. He had to come once. It was always the Father inside the body of Jesus, known as Jesus as that time. And so you can only gain entry to the Father through the Son. He had to come first, be known as the Son. He said, I'll be back again at the end of the age. Not as a floaty ghost riding a big white horse. He spoke in parables. It is like. And a white horse is the constellation of Pegasus in the heavenly realm. The signs in the heavens. It is also symbolic of power. So he comes back again through the womb of the most royal woman on the planet. This time known as Daphne Golightly. Not Mary this time. This time, Daphne go lightly. Another virgin birth, if you like, without the aid of a man, just as it was the first time. He is the father. He can have no father because he is the father of all made in his image. Does that mean all humankind? No, absolutely not. Those made in his image. So who have we speaking right now? 
these words. Either he scripted for himself or somebody else did a very poor job for him and will be his burial in this dissertation. I have spent the last 24 hours going through the writings of Augustine and then later the catechisms of the Catholic Church and I have to tell you that the basis for all of your teachings is hogwash. They had, the founding fathers had absolutely no idea of the message of the Christ nor where it would lead to. How does that make you feel, Francis? You're sitting in the chair there representing the devil in man. You are the ultimate presentation to the world of the dead, dead man walking. So, what has he got to say for himself? The humility of Francis, after we called him arrogant. Having made the text of the encyclical of his predecessor show profound harmony between Pope Benedict XVI and Bogoglio, I'll say right here from the beginning, there can never be any profound harmony between the two of them because they are not the same spirit. Made in the image of God is Benedict XVI. Made in the image of something else is Francis. So he's trying in his desperation <laughs> to show this profound harmony. And you will see as you read behind that he's plagiarizing what Benedict has written because he really admires the intellectual capacity and the deep thought of Benedict. He has none of his own, so he has to plagiarize Benedict and adopt it as his own and bring about or present to the world that there is this profound harmony going on between the both of them. I don't care what it looked like whether they have their hands on each other's shoulders. There can be no harmony between two completely different natures or spirits. One has the Spirit of God, filled with the Spirit of God. The other is the devil walking around in man, presenting its face as a face of humility. These considerations on faith in line with what the church's magisterium, that would be the governing authority of the church, has spoken about this theological virtue are added to what Pope Benedict XVI wrote letters and cyclicals on charity and hope. You see, in, in the book that everybody's reading, there are three great virtues, faith, charity and love. Let me rephrase that. Faith, hope and charity. Charity being love. Okay, the first is faith. But Benedict's already written according to uh, on charity and hope, so now this is the one on faith. I'm just going to ask everybody in the Catholic world, what have you had faith for? Why? Hello? Somebody answered me that. Oh, faith in God. For what purpose? Why? God's asking, why? What? For what? What are you hoping for? Oh, I know. I know. Faith that when you die, you'll go and live a floaty existence as some, uh, again, floaty ghost or spirit being in uh, a heavenly state for all eternity and you'll get to be with Jesus. Is that what you have hope for? That when you die, when your body of flesh decays and goes to dust, then your spirit or your soul will go off to be in this non-existent realm of uh, thought, maybe? Is that what you're hoping for? Hello? The disciples, the true disciples of Jesus, the few, they're only a handful, two handfuls. The guys were already whacked out. Lord, Lord, teach us to pray. All right. In his inevitable fashion, because he is exactly the same today as he was then. Something that the Antichrist quotes later, hoping to merge himself with the Spirit of God within his predecessor, Benedict. 
what, what, what's the word the trolls use? Epic fail, Francis. Let me see, teach you how to pray. All right, let's do it in 30 seconds. Thy Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our sins and lead us not into temptation. Give us our daily bread. Deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Or something to that effect. About 30 seconds. Now I can go on about in the Christian evangelical world how people have made either a lot of money and completely wasted their time or made no money at all and still completely wasted their time. Years of espousing what he meant. So you have all of these books, taking line by line, word by word, and writing books, pages and pages and pages on what it means so that people can pray these prayers within their closet, the secret place, and reaching into the heavenlies and pull God down to them. Has it worked? No. Just take a look at the state of the world today. So for all of the airy-fairy preaching and teaching on the Lord's Prayer, and I'm talking to the evangelical world, he meant exactly what he said. 30 seconds. Pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now why was it thou art in heaven? Because for the last 2,000 years, or rather for the last 1,910 years from the cross, from the moment that he ascended and he was taken up bodily, into the clouds. He had an angel under each armpit hauling him up, if you like. So those that watched, and there were 522 witnesses, and 522 means Amma, or the mother measure. So we're all looking up, watching him go. And then according to the text that everybody was reading, a couple of angels appear to those who are looking up. And why are you looking up? The same way he went, will he come again? So what has the Christian world taken that to mean? That it will come right in the clouds, the floaty ghost. No, he was taken bodily up into heaven, two angels underneath him, and he will re at the body as a man. He will return once again as a man, not right in the clouds. By the way, this time, as the man, when he crushed the logging truck on Valentine's Day, 1978, in Canada, he was taken up once more bodily, an angel under each armpit, up through the clouds into the heavenly realm of no time, into the light. And sent straight back with a great big reminder from his mother saying, you can't avoid it, I'm paraphrasing here, you can't avoid it, you're it, you're him, you're God. Go back and now convince the rest of deluded mankind. It's over to you. All right. So the faith of the entire Catholic world, I'll include all Protestants and evangelicals because they're all waiting around for the floaty ghost to front up and save them from the hell that they have allowed to be created on the earth. So I'm going to read to you from the Jew World Order propaganda bullshit that has pretty well succeeded in doing what they have set out to do, whereas the Christian world has completely failed to stop them because of their delusion based upon the teachings of the deluded right from the very beginning. And I'm talking about St. Augustine as one who influenced therein after the Calvinists, Thomas Aquinas, and yada, 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 yada. And I do believe that Benedict has been influenced by him. However, there is a difference, and I'll point it out shortly, into the delusional rantings and ravings of a man who was spoken to by a childlike spirit. This is Augustine's conversion to Christianity. Hello? He hears a voice. A child voice tell him to take it up and read it. So what does he take up and read? The Bible at the time straight to the words of the self-appointed apostle Paul 
the devil that as Jesus, Yeshua, Yeshua, whatever you want to call him, it was Yahweh warning his disciples, who? Me, for one, and the few who were with him, we were all essing that there would be one who would come after him, who would be a devil, and who would teach things that he, Jesus, never taught, and pervert the things that he did teach. So who could that be? Oh, I know. How about Paul, whose real name was Saul from Tarsus? And Saul, if you look it up in the Greek concordance, is one away from Satan, who had a encounter on the road to Damascus. He encountered the Lord Jesus Christ in the light. Hello, that would have been the second coming. No, it was Lucifer who appeared to him as the light. And spoke. so he was Lucifer's agent. What? To delude all mankind. So what have you got today? You've got the entire Catholic faith. Tell me faith in what? Faith that this world, such as it is, has been converted to what? The delusional ranting and ravings of self-appointed apostles who were devils that he warned about and then influences men like Augustine after to continue the delusion. Oh, mind you, Augustine studied at university rhetoric. What's rhetoric? Well, oratory. Uh, another word for it is speech making, but I think the best word for it is speechifying, which is, in my book, one word away from a politician. You get my drift. So what we have, ladies and gentlemen, is the product all wrapped up. The devil in man in Francis trying to make himself out to be humble. He doesn't know the meaning of the word. He is a murderer, a manslayer, a kidnapper of priests, and reportedly a child rapist. That is what is occupying the Vatican, which will be destroyed. Why? Because the Vatican itself has been built upon a foundation of, I will say it just really plain, total, absolute nonsense and bullshit. I have said it before. No one can comprehend the mind of God. That is why he has had to return a second time, just as he promised. So what has the faith been about of all the 1.2 billion currently Catholic or down through the ages? If it was not for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, as a man, once again, the word of God reincarnate. That's what a second time meant. I'll be back again at the end of the age. How? I will reincarnate. So incarnate a second time. And by the way, when I get back, nobody is going to believe me. Such will be the delusion of all mankind, in particular, the entire Christian world who have based their teachings upon a devil in the Apostle Paul. Francis today, go searching the internet for him, praying, prostrate, on the ground or over the coffin, lead-lined coffin, of the devil incarnate in his appointed time, John Paul II. Oh, he was such a lovely man. No, he wasn't. Devil. You see, God does not judge the way man judges. Thank God. Vatican II, what do we have? We have 2,500 men, taken three years, to put together a document that split the church, 
and Aladdin who the enemy of all mankind the same dude who sent Jesus Christ to the cross on the 3rd of April 33 AD hello that was the door you see Jesus is the door to the father why because the enemy of all mankind and God were so stupid that they sent him to the cross they think they crucified him hello he got them to murder him why because it opened the door for him to reincarnate so come back again into the body of flesh prepared for him that looks exactly like the body of flesh then because the soul influences the flesh so he's back in his body of flesh today known as Brian and Leonard Golightly Marshall whom Pope Benedict the 16th because he is filled with the Spirit of God recognized as the image within the Shroud of Turin why did Benedict recognize it because he is pure in heart truly humble he is filled with the spirit of humility what does one who is filled with the spirit of humility do well when somebody fronts up in their life and says I have a message from the Lord Jesus Christ who is returned my name is Andrea Lanich and I am the Christ's messenger the one who is filled with the spirit of humility does not turn that one away even though they've had experiences of crazy lunatics climbing statues of David and trying to smash them with a hammer in the past saying I'm Jesus I'm Jesus I'm Jesus the one filled with the spirit of humility humbles himself to take the time to begin his investigation so here we have the Antichrist Francis trying to make himself out to be humble I'll continue reading this stuff it's fascinating So he's talking about Benedict, his predecessor, he had nearly completed a first draft of the encyclical letter on faith. If the Catholic Church has not been having faith in the return of the Lord Jesus Christ as the man, then everything you've done, everything that you're um, turning your hand to now, every prayer that you've uttered, every moment that you've spent, in a chapel somewhere seeking the Lord lighting a candle spending in 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 silence in other words your entire lives and I'm talking to every single one of you religious out there your entire lives have been absolutely wasted if you have not within you the understanding that your faith would lead you to see the Christ again in his second reincarnation as Benedict has Do I make myself clear? He goes on to say, I am deeply grateful and in the fraternity of Christ. The only fraternity that Francis is in is the fraternity of the Antichrist, who are all of the occupants of the Vatican today, who would support him in his actions in the kidnapping of Father Giuseppe Ciavello and the reported murder of him and the disappearance of Sister Maria Della Rosa, the biographer of Benedict XVI. Where are they, Francis? So I'm deeply grateful in the fraternity of the Antichrist take his valuable work adding some additional contributions to the text isn't that called plagiarization 
So you're plagiarizing Benedict's work because you have no capacity within you <laughs> to be original. You're a thug, a bully, a manslayer, a murderer, a kidnapper, and a rapist. He continues, the successor of Peter, well, he's got that right. I'm going to make something very clear, and so by the time I get to the end of this, you will see what it is that this thing, speaking, is trying to do. You see, the Christ has renamed Benedict the Sixteenth Peter II, or Petrus Romanos, Peter of Rome. Why did he do that? He did it because Benedict the Sixteenth is Peter, his half-brother, Simon Peter. Benedict's mother was Mary, the mother of Jesus. She had other children naturally with her husband, Joseph ben Jacob, Yisrael. So Pope Benedict is the reincarnation of the first Peter, the brother of Jesus. This is why, as Jesus, which was everything that he spoke that time, was a prophetic message to be fulfilled in this time now, in his second incarnation. None of it has been accomplished in the 1910 years from his going until his reappearance upon the earth in his mother's womb a second time. Reborn to the earth, on that most holy day, quoting Benedict's words, of January 11th, 1944. So Francis got that part right. That is all usurpers and impostors. Think of it this way. Jesus speaking, he said to his disciples, me, one of them, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. The Father and I are one. And as I've already explained, that is the same soul. The soul of the Father talking in, through, the mouth of the body that was called Jesus. You see, I am Martha, Martha Magdalene. So it's Martha speaking. I'm known today as Janelle Margaret Go Lightly Marshall. But I am Martha Magdalene. So in Benedict the Sixteenth, you have the original, the one and only Peter, the soul of Peter, reincarnate. When Jesus said, after he asked, Peter, who do you say I am? Peter then said, thou art the Christ. To be repeated today in the reincarnation of Jesus and Peter and Martha, and by the way, Peter and I were really good friends. We got along like a house on fire. We loved each other. Peter, today known as Benedict the Sixteenth in the highest position of the land. By the way, he is still Pope because a Pope cannot resign from their position. And the Christ did not accept his resignation. What the Christ says goes. So here we have Francis, I keep thinking of the talking mule, who, by the way, has based his entire, he calls himself Francis, after St. Francis of Assisi. Well, I tell you, we've read about the life and works of St. Francis of Assisi. And like all of them, the Christ is absolutely dismayed absolutely dismayed at the idiotic concepts of these men in history, what they have got into their heads, their hearts and their minds. Francis of Assisi would have done a whole lot better if he had taken the wealth that he was born into and put it together for some good use for alleviating the suffering of all of those around him. Instead, he chose to suffer along with them and thereby brought nothing into the world that alleviated the suffering of those around him. And so you have Francis doing the same today. What does he want to do? He talks about the poor church. 
the church reaching out to the poor, the church becoming poor. For what reason? Yes, it has been overtaken. It's being the devil's lair, the infestation, mystery Babylon, absolutely, because the devil has occupied and overtaken. Why? Because it knew when the Christ get get, he would be a Catholic. If you're familiar, and as obviously Francis isn't, with the Catholic prophecies of the great Catholic monarch who would come back to restore the Catholic Church, why does it need restoring? Because it is destroyed. How? Through what I am speaking to you now. There is nothing in the Catholic Church today that will remain standing. All of its teachings have been built upon the teachings of the devil and the apostle Paul and deluded men who think they have had the Holy Spirit guiding and they have had not. So you've had a house of cards built, a delusional house of cards, one flick and it's all gone. And that one flick comes from the Christ returned, the man. You see, the word of God is a man, not a book that everybody's reading and not the books that men have said they have been inspired to write under the influence of the Holy Spirit. None. And that goes for the apparitions of Fatima and all the other delusional illu... You see, what the devil can do is create illusions. And that's what has happened. In the parables within the Garden of Eden, Adam was fooled many, 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 many times because these apparitions appeared to him and he was deluded into thinking that they were sent from heaven when God had spoken one word and says, I will come down to you in a certain period of time. Until that time, nothing. Even though Adam begged to be let back into the Eden, he was given a period of time and it was Yahweh in the heavenly realm speaking to Adam in a parable saying, it'll be at this time that I'll come until then, it'll be what it is. So what have you got? He comes the first time. Why? To be crucified. That was the whole purpose. To be killed. They could have shot him in the head if they'd had guns or rifles at that period of time. But it was crucifixion was the order of the day. That's how they did it. So that the soul of the Father, God himself, would come back at this time now. This period of time is known as the resurrection. You've got the entire Christian world waiting for this resurrection to happen where all the graves are going to open up and men will walk around. Hello, that happened at the cross. This period of time is the resurrection. You've all been here before. So, as I continue to read, Francis's, uh, I'll call it diarrhea because that's what it is, understanding if you have seen Benedict, you have seen Peter, because Benedict and Peter are one. Nobody else can be him. Just as nobody else can be the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have seen Brian Leonard go lightly, Marshall, you have seen the Father. He is the Father, and Benedict Peter recognized it because Benedict is Peter, the half-brother of Jesus, Brian. All right, so this is the Antichrist continuing. He says... I'm deeply grateful and in the fraternity of, I'm paraphrasing, the Antichrist, take his valuable work, plagiarise it, adding some additional contributions to the text. The successor of Peter, that party got right, I explained why, yesterday, today and tomorrow is always called to confirm the brothers that immeasurable treasure of faith that God gives as light on the road to every man. All right, so... 
He's saying that he is there as a pope, just as every pope has been, called to confirm the brothers, meaning the predecessor. Now, what is the only thing in this time is that it's the only time in all of history that a predecessor is still alive. This is what makes Pope Benedict, who is Peter, go to Revelation 17, 11 and read about the eight kings. We are talking about the popes who are also kings from the date in 1929, February the 11th, when the Vatican City became a Vatican, the Vatican City State. So every Pope after that, from that time, is the King Pope. And it says that the eighth will be of the seven. Well, Benedict is the se number seven from that time, and he just happened to announce his resignation on the same date in 2013, February the 11th, 84 years. What's 84? Well, first of all, it's Emmanuel, which means God with us. And second of all, it's the English gematria for Marshall. Brian, let it go lightly, Marshall. And by the way, Marshall in Hebrew is Marshall, meaning parables. As Jesus, he said, I speak in parables. He was giving another clue for this time now. I speak in marshals. It is his name. Just another little clue. For those who humble themselves, realizing that they have bought the delusion. So he's called to confirm the brothers that is measurable treasure of faith that God gives as light on the road to every man. Now Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, aka Peter, Peter, in Pope Benedict wrote an apostolic letter that he published to the world on March the twenty-sixth this year, twenty thirteen, where he was publicly announcing the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, the reincarnate Word of God, in the person of Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall. I'll just read you. So here we have. Francis standing up and saying that it's his duty to confirm the brothers, meaning the former popes. So why hasn't he confirmed the apostolic letter and the announcement that Benedict made concerning the recognition and the announcing of the Christ? Why hasn't he confirmed that? I'll tell you why. Because Francis is not filled with the Spirit of God. He is not made in the image of God. And there is nothing humble about him. He is a murderer, a liar, an arrogant, son of a bitch. Is it good enough? Do you get the picture? So, all right, let's take him at his word. So, he is to confirm Benedict, his own words. Or his script writer. You should sack him, Francis. All right, so what's he to confirm about Benedict? Well, this is the most... important encyclical, apostolic letter, decree, announcement in all 6,000 years of history. The words that his predecessor, that he is to confirm, Benedict the Sixteenth renamed Petrus Romanus or Peter the Second because he is Peter reincarnate in Christum Credent, believe in Christ. Eleven pages. I'm not going to read it all. It's all over the internet. Addressing contents of the apostolic letter, part one, 
Mr. Brian Galatly Marshall's claim to be the Lord Jesus Christ Almighty. Two, the Roman Pontiff Emeritus Benedict XVI's response to Mr. Brian Marshall's claim. Part two, the Third Vatican Ecumenical Council outlined by Brian Marshall. Three points from Vatican III which will be made public. You see, in all of the, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to call it diarrhea because that's what it is. I have read much and I have read it out to the Christ, the diarrhea of deluded men in history that has ensnared 1.2 billion souls on the planet known externally as the Catholic Church. Let's go straight to part one, section two. The Roman Pontiff Emeritus, Pope Benedict XVI's response to Mr. Brian and Galitely Marshall's claim to be the Christ. So this is what Francis, the Antichrist, in his own words, should be confirming, concerning what Benedict has written. Do I believe that Mr. Brian and Galitely Marshall is truly Jesus Christ reincarnated? Question mark. His response in bold type underlined, yes, I do believe he is Jesus Christ reincarnated. You see, many days ago, Mr. Brian Marshall sent me photographs of him and the most holy shroud of Turin. He actually looks so much like that of the holy image on the shroud. There is no other explanation. He is simply the Lord Jesus Christ Almighty. Est Christos. I was so penetrated with love and compassion from God that I requested the photo I saw to be put in a place of honour somewhere. I was told my confidant uploaded it as a cover photo on a page he created as a tribute to me. Out of all of the popes, even my own beloved predecessor, Blessed John Paul II, you see Pope Benedict himself, in the innocence of his heart and naivete, believed Paul II, John Paul II, to be a blessed man. Mr. Brian Marshall chose me to announce to the world his glorious return. Why was that? Because he is Peter. Thou art the Christ. This is Peter himself. Thou art the Christ proclaimed. Brian Leonard go lightly, Marshall. This time. Upon this rock, it's upon the proclamation that Peter made then round one and Peter has reiterated again round two, second incarnation. Upon this rock, Will I build my church? So Jesus speaking then, foretelling, prophesying today that he will build his church today upon the recognition and the statement that Peter has reiterated, Thou art the Christ. It was not built from Peter going to Rome in the years after the crucifixion. However, he knew that then. Yahweh, Jesus, Brian knew it then. That what would be built in the intervening years until he got back again, 1910 years later, to sort it all out and to open the gates or bust asunder the gates of brass, that the gates of hell should not prevail against his church, what are the gates of hell? Hello, the Vatican, the gates of hell. Homosexuality. Oh, we just learned that there was in publicity in England, the propagator and perpetrator because England is Zionism. It is Jew world order but it just happened to be published in what, the UK Guardian? What a reputable rag! However, announcing to the world 
that the Vatican owns an apartment building worth £21 million that is the headquarters for what, Eurospa? Headquarters for a homosexual resort style get together building? Hello? How many cardinals, bishops, priests are either living there or frequent there? The Vatican is the gates of hell, and that's why it will be destroyed with what truth? And the Christ, Brian Lenigo Lightly Marshall, will build his church today upon the rock of Peter Benedict the Sixteenth, who recognized and announced to the world the Christ return reincarnate, recognizing him because he is filled with the Spirit of God and had the humility to announce he was the one chosen. Let's continue with the humility, or rather the hypocrisy, What's that verse, babe, about um, they honour me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me? Hypocrites. Okay, we're in Rome. We're actually in the Castel Gandolfo area. We came here for Peter, Pope Benedict XVI. We told him we would be here for his birthday. We got delayed. We arrived on the 28th of April and have been prevented from seeing him. As a matter of fact, once the Vatican learned that we're in this Castel Gandolfo area, they shipped him earlier, ahead of time, back to the Vatican, to the monastery behind the walls there. And George Ganswain has not <laughs> made time for us to meet with our friend, Benedict, brother, dear friend, beloved, Peter. Okay, so he's called to confirm the brother. So why isn't Francis confirming his brother? That's what he's trying to make out, that he's so close with Benedict and they agree on everything. That immeasurable treasure of faith that God gives as light on the road to every man. So this is a reference to the Apostle Paul. You remember the devil and his account on the account on the road to Damascus. The light that appeared, well the light that appeared was Lucifer. It was an infiltration. It was not a, what, what a, a conversion. So go and check out the um, uh, the oath that Francis has sworn as a Jesuit priest. A lot of you are probably already familiar with. There's one part where there where each one of them takes upon themselves to do anything to implement the kingdom of God upon the earth, including the smashing of baby skulls against walls, overturning any and every government that would stand in its way because it is the agent that will bring about the kingdom of God upon the earth. Okay, so what happened? Well, you know, all right, Jesuit in place. What did Jesus say? Well, first of all, he said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. This is in regard to making oaths. Anything else, he said, is of the devil. Hello? Swearing oaths? Everything else of a yes or a no is of the devil. So we've got the devil in Francis swearing an oath to do this, that, and the other. I, mean, I think there's other things about it. Oh, it's macabre. It's really disgusting. All right, so take it at face value. This really shows the intent and the, the uh, intention of their heart to bring about the kingdom of God upon the earth. After all, it is, it's very Jewish. It's very Judaism. It is very Talmud, the entire earth. So let's take that and use it with the Christ. He could do with an army that would be that dedicated to him. He would not require it of them. However, if they're that dedicated to him, then maybe that's what it's going to take to overturn <laughs> the oath makers who have turned heaven into hell, meaning the world today. All right? Let's take Francis at his word. When he realises that the Christ is back, 
and he can help bring about the kingdom of God upon the earth. He just may set about and be the man to rally what it takes to overturn what the devil has put in place. Hello? No. <laughs> None of them. Not the entire Jesuit world who has been notified that the Christ has returned. None of them. Not the Knights Templars. No. Why? Because they are all of the devil, filled with devils, each one of them. Devils themselves. They honour him with their lips. They speak the name Jesus Christ. They make vows in his name. Even the Swiss guards. But their hearts are far from him. So far from him that when he turns up again, none of them recognise him. Because it takes the pure in heart to see God. That's what he said as Jesus. The pure, it was a promise. You know the Beatitudes up on the Mount of Olives there. The pure in heart shall see God is what he promised, which is what Benedict did. He saw God within the shroud of Turin, the photographic overlay that Joe Bellinger, that I call Shakespeare, did about three years ago. Thank you, Joe. The image within the shroud of Turin is the word of of God reincarnate today known with his new name Revelation 312 Brian Lenigo Lightly Marshall which by the way has an English gematria of 312 that's just one one little clue and then in the Revelation he warned the Archangel Michael oh that's right because this whole this whole this whole um, a, a diarrhea spewing out of the mouth of Francis is all over the dedication of some statue to the Archangel Michael who he was asking to protect and oversee the Holy See. Well the Archangel Michael is the angel of Jesus and he's doing nothing to protect Francis. As a matter of fact between he and Gabe they'll be evicting Francis at his death, his soul, not made in the image of God, will be cast off the earth, along with all of the homosexuals, not only in the Vatican, but upon the earth. They'll be taken by their angel at death to the same place that Francis, and they can all have a dog and pony show together or whatever it is. Actually, no, they won't be. A lot of people think that hell's a party. <laughs> All right, so moving right along, this goes on. I know this is lengthy. However, there's much um, diarrhea to wade through. So this handful of rows between nine and ten pages of Lumen Fidei, which is the name of the encyclical that Benedict started, the new Pope's first encyclical is the best answer to those who in these first months of pontificate dedicated themselves to the counts of gestures of ruptures or unconformity. Now, I'm not sure what that means, but I, I think it's all those who stood around and, and uh, ticked off on a ledger all the things that Francis did wrong. The colour of the shoes to the metal cross from Ferula to 1917, less valuable. Most accents, social and ethical issues, less interventionist in homilies and so on. So he's making a list of all the things that he apparently did wrong, according to those in the Vatican who were standing around and counting all of his uh, faux pas. So the encyclical, which is today published, first attests the affection and veneration that Bergoglio has toward his predecessor. Now the thugs who kidnapped Father Giuseppe Ciavello, they got a bit cocky there at one point and, and wrote quite a bit to me. They bragged that um, they were the Antichrists what they were doing. They are the Antichrist. And what they said about Francis was that he really doesn't give a shit. By that they're referring to the fact that the Christ has returned and been announced by Pope Benedict in an apostolic letter. They said of that that he really didn't give a shit, that he was just uh, amazed that a 
well-regarded theologian would be crazy enough to believe that Christ is back. So the men that were hired by Francis to kidnap Giuseppe Civello and then reportedly murdered him on April the 13th and have taken Sister Maria Della Rosa somewhere unknown, or perhaps they've murdered her as well, were bragging how the Goglio, the Antichrist, really doesn't give a shit. And by the way, we've already exposed him, the Gog Leo, exactly what he is. He really doesn't give a shit about the Christ being back. He's just amused or amazed, whatever, that um, a revered theologian like Benedict would be crazy enough to think that the Christ has returned. What was that about faith? Faith, faith for or in what? For what reason? Okay. What amuses me is that Benedict did his first draft on the encyclical on faith and then he runs smack bang into the object of his faith being the returned Christ. Hello? It's two of us on the earth. Martha and Peter. All of those others who have found us, they were looking for the truth. Were they looking for the Christ? No. They were looking for the truth. And as Jesus, he told his disciples that you must be a seeker of truth. So Francis is not a seeker of truth. Francis is made not in the image of God. Oh, continues, it is true that even Benedict XVI, for the second half of his first encyclical, had assumed and significantly reworked material that had been prepared for its predecessor. Now that part doesn't make sense. I don't know whether it's lost in the translation or whatever, because the predecessor of Benedict is dead, Pope John Paul II. So let's just put this down to lost in translate in, in the diarrhea of what was coming out of Francis's mouth, which incidentally was not going to publish them as they were. But this comparison is not the same as today's. Francesco has taken, and by integrating it with some additions, a complete text and prepared for his predecessor, an encyclical duet. Here we go, rather like a song. Called Bergoglio, sweeping away as usual formalisms of palace denials. So obviously that's all of the uh, scandalising that's been going on and denied within the Vatican itself. Everybody knows what's uh, it's a, a den of homosexuals and it's a den of iniquity. A very Ratzingerianana, yeah right, you know what that means, encyclical by language, meaning written in the style of Ratzinger, meaning Pope Benedict. Structure citations which bears the signature of the first Latin American Antichrist. He is not Pope. Humbly, that should be hypocritically, taking all the work prepared by his predecessor and his collaborators, meaning all of the work that Benedict has done and those around him, the Pope Antichrist not only makes clear that the task of the successor of Peter yesterday, today and tomorrow is confirm the brothers, that immeasurable treasure of faith that God gives as light on the road to every man. So, again, reiterate, to confirm the work of the brothers. So bottom line is, throughout all of this uh, uh, diarrhea, oh, we'll finish here with this, but he also says it's harmony with the deep inside of Ratzinger on the faith and the church. So what he's saying is that um, he has no deep insight and so he's taking Pope Benedict's insight, putting it together, mixing it with his words and signing it himself and then calling it a duet of harmony and showing how close he is to Pope Benedict. Well, they are as chalk is to cheese, as light is to dark, 
as to never the twain shall meet as far as the east is from the west. Benedict, who is Peter, is filled with the Spirit of God and share the same mother in the Holy Mother Mary. All right, so he craps on about um, a look that too often has been forgotten or reduced by certain so-called Ratzingerian intent on transforming awe and beauty for God's free initiative in law and order. You know, I have read this to the Christ and he just looks at me with, what the hell is he talking about? You see, as Jesus, he spoke plainly. To his disciples. He spoke in parables for everybody else knowing that they wouldn't get it. Today he is back. He's not speaking in parables anymore. He doesn't have to. We are here now in his second reincarnation and he is taking the crooked places established by every man come before him who thinks that they know something and preaching Paul and not the words, which were simple, of Jesus. By the way, you cannot change the nature of somebody. You are either have the Spirit of God and made in his image and the humility to see and recognize him as Benedict did, or you do not. You cannot cross over to become something that you are not. Do I make myself clear? It is humility slash hypocrisy not to consider the church as dependent on the, now the word has been, and this word doesn't exist, but I think he means protagonism, I think he means the protagonist, meaning the, the leader or the hero of the plot, he's talking about of the Bishop of Rome, in the consciousness of the fact that faith is to give space to the presence and initiative to another. So in his hypocritical way, he's bowing down to Pope Benedict. And this is how it finishes. Combining intimately Benedict XVI, comma, Pope Emeritus, and Peter, comma, the Pope. Now, I think it's a very vain attempt to suggest, because they call him Pope, the Christ doesn't, he is not Pope. But I think it's a vain attempt to say that he, the Francesco, is Peter. No, he is not. If you have seen Benedict the Sixteenth, you have seen Peter, because Benedict the Sixteenth and Peter are one. Benedict the Sixteenth is the reincarnated soul of the brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, Simon Peter. Upon this rock, Benedict the Sixteenth, who is Peter, I will build my church now in this day, starting from square one, starting from scratch, because the Vatican is destroyed, all of its teachings based upon the devil. Paul burned, if you like, book burning, that would be good, start from scratch. And it all begins with Vatican III, written for Peter, when asked, 49 points. So simple, so plain, it just makes sense, said Benedict. So why hasn't Francis confirmed Vatican III, the 49 points? It makes straight the crooked places. It sorts out every problem the church has been facing for millennia exactly what you would expect the Christ to do when he comes back to take over his church. The faith that Benedict recognized, the faithful, are now experiencing all he has magnanimously included, the 1.2 billion, 
understanding that he is Pope, they would believe him. However, we are sad to report that in all of our speaking, writing, alerting, the faithful, they are all, or at least the leaders of them, in the bishops, priests, they are all as deluded as Francis not made in the image of God. Their father, the devil, a liar and a murderer from the beginning. Let's take a look at Vatican III. First point, Vatican II has split the church. Vatican III must reunite the Holy Church. As I've read through the catechisms written by other popes, etc., uh, the thing that has come to them the most is people leaving the church. Why? Because it is obsolete in today? Well, it was never the answer from the beginning. However, Christ comes back and he takes over and makes it effective. A whole lot of rhetoric has been written down and a whole bunch of men, silly old farts, have expended a whole lot of gas, speechifying and being totally ineffective. Having no knowledge or understanding no comprehension of the mind of God. So, it has to be destroyed, torn down, and built again. Two, the orientation of the Mass was best served facing east. To remind us the importance of receiving first light, sun rises in the east, as it is emphasised, the light of the world being Christ overcoming spiritual darkness. Hello? Spiritual darkness in high places? talking about the Vatican. The return of the Lord is paramount to the faith. It says it all there. What have I been going on about? Faith in what? What have you all had faith in? The return of the Lord should have been your answer. Coming again as a man, just like he promised. His return likened to the rays of the sun, overcoming darkness, must be the focal of the holy promise being fulfilled. This is what thrilled Benedict the Sixteenth, and what Francis, who out of his own mouth is to confirm his predecessor, the brothers, has rejected, denied, cut off, because he is opposed to the Christ. He is anti-Christ, and all who support him are. Three, the language of the Mass in Latin is desirable, with the local language to inform the people of the key points pertaining to Christ. Now remember, it took 2,500 men three years to destroy the church, you know, to, to uh, you know, divide the church and allow the Jews in. The enemies of Hitler and Christ. Judaism. The devil in men. Francis is one of their puppets. For this holy mass must make it clear Christ has returned as prophesied via parables translated to the actual event having taken place. This is the good news. This is the preaching of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has not come. How can a kingdom come when the king is not present? The kingdom could only come now when the king is present. He is in residence where upon the earth his temple. So the kingdom of God is now preached to all four corners of the earth. Until now, everybody's wasting their breath. Gas bags, like listening, the sound of their voices, etc., etc., etc. All got it wrong, very simply. No humility. They've all been deluded. 
Revelation 12, 12. Woe unto the habitants of the earth. The devil has been cast down to you and does deceive the entire world. Okay. Five, a holy mass must be the good news of faith in Jesus. In recognizing the second coming of the Lord and the promise of everlasting life here upon the earth. Not as a floaty ghost out in the spiritual world of no time. Upon the earth. The Lord's Prayer. The blatantly obvious. It's all really very simple. This is what Benedict recognized. It's all so simple. It just makes sense, he said. The burden lifted. Joy filled his heart. He became strong again. Six, the Holy Church must return to the former glory as tradition is vital for uniformity worldwide. So those who would cast tradition out the window, no, you keep the traditions that are worth keeping as a uniformity recognized by everybody, no matter where they go around the earth. That's the uniformity, the good traditions. Seven, Vatican II opened the door to the Jews to the point where it is possible for a converted Jew to attain a high position in the Holy Church. Wrong. Jews do not convert. They infiltrate, just like the Apostle Paul did. And by their own admission today. They are deceivers and liars. Just told you, you cannot change their nature. They are not made in the image of God. They are his enemies, sons of Cain. No way, Jose. Vatican II opened the door to the Jews to the point where it is possible for a converted Jew to attain a high position in the Holy Church, contrary to the spirit of love of the meek, which entrusts the Holy Church officials to be ever vigilant against infiltration by the Jews. So what does Francis do on the 15th of March, two days after his election? It was reported through the Rome report that he telephoned or took a phone call from the head rabbi in New York. Hello. Eight, the church must maintain an awareness of the Jew as their Talmud known as the Mishnah at the time of Jesus is entirely evil and targets Jesus and the faithful for death by corruption. Homosexuality, pornography, Corruption of texts, writings, scriptures, music, Hollywood, all media. Nine, the Pentecostal Freemason Zionist churches worldwide are divided into 36,000 denominations, all target the Holy Mother Church of Jesus for destruction and eliminating the Lord and his promise to physically return with his reward for the meek who will inherit the earth. Physical return. That's the faith that all should be relying on. The faith of his physical return. Not as a floaty ghost riding a thousand foot high horse coming on the clouds. Abortion is murder and must be made aware that it is the corporate beast of the Jews which has several aims. To reduce the world Christian population it controls via Protestant churches and via thought of modern acceptance infiltrate into the mindset of Catholic masses loyal to Jesus. 10. Contraception, although it is not encouraged, may be adopted by married couples who feel they cannot cope with the pressures private to their own determination and circumstances as a means for managing a healthy family for both mother and child. Is this speaking plainly? Does it sort out all? So far, we just started. Of the questions pertaining to the church and <gasps> what do we do here, what do we do there? 13, rather 12, marriage is the sexual act of intercourse. Hello, did you hear that? Marriage is the sexual act of intercourse, not the ceremony in a church with hundreds of people, bringing gifts, sitting down to a supper. It's the sexual act of intercourse. So boys and girls, 
men, women. While we were in Papua New Guinea, treating those who have AIDS and killing the AIDS virus within minutes, he was asked all the time, what about this, what about that? And he used to say, by speaking plainly, not in a parable or symbolically, but very plainly to the men who were asking, if you are going to put your dick into a woman, then you had better be very certain that you are prepared to look after her for the rest of your lives. Now that is speaking plainly. Marriage is the sexual act of intercourse and as such any male who seduces a woman is forever married to that woman and is responsible for any pregnancy and will care for the mother and child permanently. 13. Homosexuals in the church hierarchy is an absolute abomination and will be put out of the church. 14. Officials and any church attendant who is involved in homosexuality will be offered therapy but cannot participate in any office or mingle in the congregation. 15. Child molestation will be totally eradicated as a priority and those found guilty by the witness of children past and present will be charged with a crime against morality and dealt with by the police and sentenced to jail permanently until death. 16. Any misgivings by nuns or priests who have been found guilty of cruelty both mentally and physically will be excommunicated from the Holy Mother Church. You see, the Christ went to a Catholic convent. He knows the cruelty of nuns and priests alike, he being the victim of it daily. 17. Any parish conveying any proclamation contrary to the teaching of Jesus will have a means available for the parish to have a voice by the bishops to address these issues to the Vatican for a speedy resolution. How about same day answer? No. Or yes, with a little modification. 18. Only the words of Jesus will be preached from the pulpits. So what are we saying there? No more poor. No more devil from the pulpits. 19. The Torah is an abomination promoting the Jews as the promised people when in fact was condemned by Jesus myself then and now. You can read Harold Rosenthal's interview. One of the five big lies that they've been able to convince the world of is that they are the chosen people of God. They know they're not because their God is Lucifer. 20. Divorce is permissible under certain circumstances. Adultery, cruelty, oppression of freedom of thought, oppression physically or domination under misguided spiritual views. You see, God is love. If there is no love between a man and a woman who have been married, then there is no God between them. Better out than in. 21. Priesthood. In the past, the priesthood has been in the domain of men. However, women were essential to ethics at the time of Jesus and his ministry. There shall be no limitation on the participation of women in the church who are equally qualified and who elect to be ministers to women and children of the congregation and can preach from the pulpits to both men, women and children. 22. Male priests acting as confessors are encouraged to advise women to consult female priests as their confessors as an option. 23. Church officials and marriage. Traditionally a priest or, or nun or brother could not marry. This created temptations for sin to encroach into the Holy Mother Church, all based upon the words of Paul and the interpretations of deluded men who had no idea, or for one reason or other in their own lives, sought to impose what God never has upon the ministry of men and women. It is inevitable that pregnancy will occur and children born into these circumstances have 
caused serious consequences to violate the sanctity and holiness of the church and homicide of the innocent from abortion to outright murder of the child. Twenty-four eyes the Creator, it is my judgment there should be a separate order of priesthood. Nuns and brothers who as individuals prefer an order where they can marry and have children as I intended man and woman to be. Nothing is more sacred than the love between a man and a woman in holy matrimony and the begetting of children made in my image. Thirty-seven. No, gone from 24 to 25. The Immaculate Heart of Mary as the Mother of the Holy Church can act as mediator between the meek and the Father. Myself, I'm talking about Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall as the Father. It must be understood that when I said let us make man and woman in our image, I was talking to the Mother. The Holy Church, therefore, is the spirit of the wife of Christ, the Holy Mother. 26. Baptism. Traditionally, a baby was baptized by a priest by anointing the head of the baby with holy water. A second baptism by immersion must accompany the child or adult into the grace of the church via education of the principles laid down myself, Jesus, who, as an example, was baptized as an adult in water, baptism by full immersion. First time by John the Baptist, second time. <laughs> repeated. 27. The veneration of saints is the prerogative of the Holy Mother Church. Cardinals and bishops who have under due prudence nominated a person for his or her merits in serving the name of Jesus. 28. All valuables held by banks or depositories will be sold at current Values as gold and silver is prophesied to be valueless upon the return of Christ. The exchange will be directed into projects that must deal with the present system to acquire goods or equipment to be used by the church in developing the nations as a whole. 29. A close examination of investments in all corporations must be sold off discreetly to avoid devaluation and the reaction of a stock market collapse that will be the reaction of the Jews once our actions are discovered. 30. All churches, schools, convents and other facilities will be health and distribution centres for the free for free to all Christ health protocols and nourishment. 30. The Mother Church must build telecommunication to address world and local events that are presently owned and dominated by the Zionists intent on demoralising and desensitising the children into a demonic possession. For example, music, movies, television, radio, and computer games where immorality, death, and destruction covertly introduces the child into a world where demons are good and Jesus is eliminate, eliminated. Jewish dominated. 32. Judaism will not be tolerated under any pretense of freedom of religion. Our church must and will dominate and have no tolerance for any non-Jesus religion. The way is narrow to salvation and everlasting life and is only possible through the belief in the Gospels and Jesus, the man myself, Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall. So herein is the crux of everything. This can be read in its entirety at the script site. The link is below. However, I've just been told to keep going by the Christ. I just wanted to point out here that the way is narrow to salvation and everlasting life and is only possible through the belief in the Gospels and Jesus, the man, myself, Brian and Lightly Marshall. See, what Francis is preventing by not announcing or not confirming his predecessor, Benedict, who is Peter, the announcement that the Christ is returned is he is preventing the salvation of the 1.2 billion Catholics, not to mention all the other Christians on the earth who will fall into line at the announcement. He is preventing the salvation of the world. Now I call that Antichrist. I don't find anything humble in that. 
33. Rule with a rod of iron. Of the first five books of the Bible, there is considerable Jewish influence diverting truth into abominations, dominated covertly by the Talmud, the Babylonian and Galilean Mishnah. This is why I said, do not make railing accusations against the body of Moses, Jude 1, 9, via Michael, the archangel, the angel of Jesus. Jesus is rebuking the devil, the Jews, John 8, 44. For their perversion of the words of Moses on which the laws of Talmudic Judaism is based, known as the Torah. 34. Sin. The priesthood is an advisor in the confessional as to the understanding to individuals what sin they may or may not have committed. Based on that advice, the parishioner is made to understand that forgiveness by the Father, myself, this is Brian Lenigo, lightly Marshall talking, is dependent upon the person's age-related understanding and under these circumstances can enter into a closet, meaning a place of privacy where the soul can pray privately for forgiveness. 35. One's body is the tabernacle of God, Jesus, which is the glory of God within you, and a person's body must be respected by self and in so doing will maintain spiritually and physically the tabernacle made in the image of God. The priesthood must advise the congregation on how to maintain the body with the recommended Mother Mary diet and maintenance of good health, following the examples of the priesthood, who themselves have been educated how to follow the Mother Church guidelines of spiritual and physical health. 37. All churches, holy water will be pure living waters of colloidal silver with the vials supplied with my blood to the churches. 38. The Eucharist representing the flesh and body of Jesus is required for the continual observance of church ritual. It will have the initials BLGM, Brian Lenny Golightly Marshall, and love, and be announced each occasion the Eucharist is performed. 39. The cup of wine representing the blood of Christ will have in it the actual blood of Christ taken from the Vatican in a vial to the world churches so that all who drink from it inherits the spirit of Christ. As the vial will contain blood molecules therein and be made available to the congregation in a special ceremony after the parishioners reach a level of purification following steps laid out by the Vatican Mother Church of Mary. 40. Once a person reaches the guidelines laid out by the Mother Mary, it is understood that it will be of dire consequences for those apostates that secretly and covert do works of the devil, being the Jews. John 8, 44. 41. Education of children. The children will be taught that God is love and is Jesus and is Christ, the Holy Trinity, made known today as Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall. The focus on love extends to a thorough level of understanding of the prophecies of the prophets concerning the return of Jesus after crucifixion. 42. The Lord's Prayer was given by Jesus predicting that heaven will come to the earth and with it paradise will be manifest here upon the earth for the meek and must be via the teaching of the Holy Mother Church. 43. Children of God will be educated by the Holy Mother in all things as dictated by Mother Mary to her son Jesus when I was a child. 44. There will be no circumcisions. 45. There will be no vaccinations. 46. Any non-Catholic church member is invited to join the congregation and regardless will partake of the health benefits. And where 47, 48, and 49 are, well, that can remain a mystery. <laughs> well, there is money, but the money. 
Yes, that's the economics. That's a completely separate document. Nine points. But um, I'll put well, it the down. The church will produce them. Yeah, the church. Yes, it's all about the economy. Now, of course, um, Francis is, is uh, talking about the church becoming poor, reaching out to the poor, becoming like the poor. No, the kingdom of God is built upon the provision of everything needed for a worry-free, happy, peaceful existence all provided by the kingdom so that everybody is raised up to have plenty. Now that can be accomplished when the Christ, who is the head of the Catholic Church, giving instruction to his right-hand man, who is his brother Peter, Pope Benedict XVI, who comes back as the eighth Pope, after this little period of intervention where the Antichrist is exposed, Lucifer, all been exposed, already been exposed. The Vatican begins printing the money for the 1.2 billion, which will increase to end up covering the entire earth. Therein, the money changers who have been in control of the temple, their tables are overturned. They no longer have control of the money supply. It will be the Christ. So everybody has plenty to live a happy, carefree existence for the sake of the children to come. All good. So here endeth the lesson in the hypocrisy of Francis, who is not doing what he says all popes are supposed to do in regarding their brothers. His predecessor, Benedict XVI, who is Peter the Rock. <laughs>